right? Just go ahead and, and watch um, and go ahead and try to repeat this process. And again, if you run into any issues, you can get in touch with me and let me know, all right? So we are, uh, we are recording now. So let's go ahead. The first thing we're gonna do here for DocuSign, this is kind of the precursor, is I wanna go and make sure that DocuSign is connected properly. So I've already heard from a couple of you all that uh, you might have some, some issues with this. So let's go talk about it as best as we can. So we're gonna click the drop down here inside of command on your name. Go ahead and go down to settings and click on that. All right. When, it, when your settings open up here, what we're looking for is this application right here that says DocuSign. Okay, now mine says connected, and that's the ultimate status that we're trying to get to. Now, we were talking about this a little bit if you guys were on the call early here. You have to log in, right, to DocuSign once a day uh, to, to access all the documents. So when it asks you to log in, it says, hey, what's your email address? That's your username. This is giving you... Um, a tip on what that email address is. So in, in, in the agent's uh, case we were talking about, right, it's basically they have the same, you know, jdetter at Gmail at Verizon. So we're trying to figure out what email address this is. But if yours are a little bit different, you might be able to tell which email you used to set up your DocuSign account. Now, because I'm already connected, I cannot show you the process of connecting the account. But there's this really great help article here, which I'm gonna go ahead and put into the chat and it walks you through step by step and highlights each click and how you're going to connect DocuSign to your command system. All right, so I'll go ahead and put this in the chat. One big thing is if you already use DocuSign, you can't use an email address that is already associated with a DocuSign account. Um, you're going to use a separate, um, a separate DocuSign uh, or a separate email to sign up for this DocuSign account. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this in the chat here. Hit paste. There you go. Now, if it says connected and you're able to log in, we'll be able to go through the whole class today and you can follow along with me in terms of adding documents, signatures, all those types of things, okay? Any questions on making sure that DocuSign is connected? Everyone know where to go do that. All right, I will take that silence as a yes. Go ahead and use the chat feature if you want, if you have any questions as we go, and I'll check in and answer them best I can. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to navigate over to opportunities. So inside of command, we have all of these different applets. One of them, and the, and the one in which DocuSign is housed, is called opportunities. All right, so in the compliance class, I kind of slow down here and we talk about how to create opportunities. So if you need help with those things, um, really watch that compliance class. I'm teaching it again tomorrow at 11 o'clock. For today, I just want to get into opportunities so we can get over into DocuSign, so we can really get to what this class is about. So I'm going to go a little bit quick here, and you can ask me some questions if you have them. So I'm going to go to opportunities, and for today's class, I'm going to create a new opportunity. All right, so I see Sandy is sitting right in front of me today, so I'm going to use her as my example today. Uh, here's the example we'll use. Sandy's in my database, right? She's already in my, my contacts. And she reached out to me and said, hey, Kyle, we're thinking about selling our house this spring. Um, we want to sell it, maybe list it in February. Can we set an appointment with you? So what I'm about to go do is I'm going to go through the process of how do I get to DocuSign to get all of my listing paperwork, get them filled out and sent over to Sandy for signature. Good? All right. So to do that, I'm going to start by creating an opportunity. And if you've already created the opportunity, you would skip this step. You would simply go to the opportunity. So I'm going to hit create opportunity here. And you got to make sure you select the proper market center. This should be your market center. What kind of opportunity is it? Okay. So opportunity type here. So uh, someone here, I'm not sure who it is, uh, Little Lobster, sent me a message uh, in terms of DocuSign. I'll show you in a second how you're going to get to DocuSign from command. You can log in directly to DocuSign to access your rooms but you must start the room from command. If not, they're not connected and talking to each other. So I'll get to that question in just a second. So let's say this is a listing, the client here. So I'm gonna type in Sandy. She's already in my database. So I'm gonna type in Sandy, there she is. I'm gonna select her, okay? And then the only other thing I need to put in here to create an opportunity is my commission rate. So I'm gonna put in 3% and click create. I, again, I go over this a little bit slower in the other class. Any questions on creating an opportunity? I think most of you have this by now. I have a question. 
Sure. Would it be, would if you, um, like for example, in dot loop, we used to say we're speaking, we're talking to someone and it's not confirmed mm -hmm. whether they're a buyer or they're list, listing yep. uh, and it's just a, you know, like a lead or whatever. Yep. Um, is that possible to do or do you have to pick the type listing so tenant? To, yeah, you have to pick the type right here. So is it a potential listing? So Michelle, what I would say is that person would just stay in your database as you're nurturing them. Whenever okay. they say like, okay, hey, Joe, I'm thinking about selling my house then that's when you would create the opportunity. Okay. Okay, good question. Okay, thanks. Yep. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click create on the opportunity here. It's gonna go ahead and let me in. And now we're on this screen here, which is called the opportunity details page. All right, so we just get here by either creating an opportunity or by clicking on uh, the opportunity name, it'll bring us back to the screen. All right, so DocuSign, everything we're gonna do today is gonna be in this documents tab right here. Okay, so for the very first time here again, when I'm coming into to work with Sandy here to prep for paperwork, the next click is I'm going to click on documents. Okay, when I click on documents here, uh, when it pulls up, it says, first off, what checklist do you want to uh, to start with an opportunity? Please select checklist type first. So over here on the left, because Fairfax Gateway is licensed in multiple states, right over here, it says checklist type. We're just selecting, is this listing for Sandy, is it in Virginia, Washington, DC, or Maryland? And that just changes the compliance checklist because obviously forms are different uh, in what's required for states. So I would say Virginia over here. And that's just kind of to set this up. All right, any questions about navigating here into the documents tab? All right, now, right up top here, you see a button that says start a transaction. It says that because this is the first time I'm coming into the documents tab and clicking on this button. If I would have created this opportunity a month ago and already started this room and I was coming back in to maybe create an addendum or something, this button wouldn't be here. Instead, it would say, go to transaction. Does that make sense? So start a transaction the very first time you come into the room, go to transaction every time after that. So first time I'm coming in here, obviously for Sandy. So I'm going to go ahead and click on start a transaction and I'm going to start it through DocuSign. Okay, so click the button and I'm selecting DocuSign and that's going to open a tab, right? That's going to open up DocuSign. And so here's what it looks like. So this is where it's asking me now to log into DocuSign. So when you connected it in the settings, you created a username and password, right? This was that email I was saying, we got to figure out which one it is. So Michelle, I hear you. If we're stuck here, I'll get with you after the call and I'll help you get this straightened out. Okay. We got to know you. that email and yeah. then we're going to log in with our password that we created as well. So everyone needs to know that. All right. Now mine saves on my computer and just note, you only log in once a day. Okay. So once I log in first thing in the morning, as I'm doing my contracts throughout the day or prepping other paperwork, I don't have to log in every time. In addition, as you're logging in, some of you might be getting a, a verification code of some sort. We need a six digit code. Uh, you might have either dual authentication turned on or device verification turned on. You can turn those off and I'll show you how to do that in just a few minutes, but you shouldn't need to put in code every single time. If you wanna turn that off, you can, all right? Now, once we log in, it should look like this. This is a DocuSign room, okay? That's what we're calling it. Well, it's not what I'm calling, that's it, what it's called. DocuSign room. Notice up here it says Sandy Shender listing, right? So this DocuSign room is now talking to this opportunity. And that's important, right? They're linked together. And the reason that's important is for compliance purposes, we're just going to be able to move documents over from DocuSign into compliance, right? We don't have to download anything, uh, so on and so forth. So the action I just took of creating the room, that's what you must do from command. Now, if I'm out at a hotel, and I need to get into my DocuSign room for, for documents for Sandy, I can log in directly to DocuSign.com and access this room, right? But it needs to be started from command. So I basically tell people, if you start an opportunity, so Michelle, if you might create an opportunity for Joe, I might create the opportunity, go right to the documents tab, create the room, and then that whole thing is done. And now people can access that, you know, on their computer, on their tablet or wherever else. Okay. Okay. All right, questions here. Let's take a pause here for just a minute. Any questions on getting into this DocuSign room? 
So Kyle, you're saying create the opportunity first and then you're going to then come into DocuSign and create the room. Yes. Wait, okay. say that again, say that again, Julie. You're gonna create the opportunity first, then you're coming into documents and you're creating the room. Correct. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Kyle, how do you access the opportunity? Like once you've created it, mm -hmm. how do you, how do you? Um... Might get back to this? Yes, please. The best way to do it is, I don't wanna go all the way back, but the best way to do it, Jesse, honestly, is if I go to contacts and I search for Sandy, that's the best way to do it, right? Look at her contact profile. In her contact profile, she has an opportunities tab right next to like notes and things like that. So I can just go, Sandy, opportunity, click on it. It brings me right back to the screen right here. Okay. Jesse, I just sent you a message. I'll get with you about your error on DocuSign when we get off. Okay. okay. Yep. <laughs> All right. So any questions on this right here, guys? Everyone's good on getting to the screen. Okay. Now, here's the first thing I want you to do is I want you to notice that there is a toolbar here. The first thing you should do is go backwards to details. Go to the details screen here. This is where things will auto populate the contract from. All right, so notice that I have Sandy, I have her information in her uh, contact profile. So because she is the person I selected, it automatically made Sandy seller number one and brought in her phone number and email from the contact record, All right? Now, if I needed to add another seller in for Sandy, I could do that, right? So if I wanted to add in her spouse, I could. Um, I could add it, his, put it, put his information in here and click save. Okay. We'll just leave it as Sandy today. Also, um, note that you can put in the, the listing address here. I've mentioned this before. It used to auto populate. It doesn't anymore because what was happening was the contracts were auto populating with someone's like home address. Maybe they were selling like an investment property or flipping a property. So now you just fill this in. What's the listing address for Sandy? I'll go ahead and type in it's 404 Dead Road, right? And I can put in Riversville. Maryland, okay, fill out some of these different things here. So you, I don't know if you saw it or not, but what I did on this details tab was I clicked that edit button right up top here. And now that allows me to type in all this information. So you guys get the point here. If I type this in, in just a minute, when I bring over the documents, I'm gonna bring in the listing agreement, the D4 disclosure, that address will just be populated to all of those documents, right? I won't need to go in and fill that out um, from there, okay? Um, I could not put a random name into a client box. So how do I create a new client that isn't in my database? Uh, so you, in order to create the opportunity, they have to be in your database. Yep. So in order to create the opportunity, the contact must be in your, at least one of the people does. If you're, if I'm working with Sandy and her husband, I don't need to put both in command. At least one of them does though. So I can create the opportunity. Um, is there an option to create lease versus sale and an opportunity? Yes. So uh, gift, when you select your opportunity, it says listing buyer, landlord, or tenant. So you would select which one of those apply. Who are you representing in that opportunity for lease? All right, good question, guys. All right, makes sense. So I'm gonna add in that information here. Please make sure you click save. I'm getting a lot of people who are just going back and they're clicking on the documents tab here. Make sure you click save so that information actually holds. All right, and it would look like that. Yeah, Craig, exactly that. So in order to create an opportunity where we run compliance from, you need to have uh, your contact in command to create the opportunity. Yep. Okay, so we added them in the details page. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to documents. We're gonna go to the documents tab here. Craig, also, you don't need to add in like all their information. It's just their name. You just have to put in their name when you create a contact. You don't need to put in email, phone numbers, notes, you know, just you have to create a contact, just their name, and then you can move forward. Hey, Kyle. Yes. Um, can we go back to details real quick? Um, you said when you click save, where is the save button? I just. I yep, so once I, I, once I click edit and I fill in some information, it's down here at the bottom, Lorna. Oh, it will be on the bottom. Okay, I don't see it here. I'm like, okay. Yep, so if you, <laughs> All right, so, got it. Yep, if you click edit, then you'll see it, right? So you have to get in the edit. Oh, I first, see it now. Okay. Then go yeah. ahead and see it. Thank you. Kyle, uh, I had a question. When I have a buyer instead of listing, when you, we put the address and location, do we put the address of the the property we are gonna buy or the address of our present address where they're living of our clients? Yeah, so uh, you're saying if you're working with a buyer, right? Is that what you said, Antonetta? Yes. Yep, so in the in the buyer side, if this was a buyer room, it would be saying, uh, 
it would say address to purchase. Like it tells you on the buyer side, which one's going to be filling in the purchase contract they're making an offer on. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. So once we get through that details page, now we're going to come forward and we're going to go to go into documents. So uh, I saw this question was asked again. I need to start the room from command. I have to do that. Once I do that, everything I'm doing right now, I can do by logging in directly to DocuSign, right? So for a lot of people, like some people used to get the dot loop through my KW, right? You have to do that the very first time, then you can log in directly to dot loop.com if you want to. It's the same thing here, right? You can log in, but it must be started from command. All right, so I'm coming to documents. Now we're at the point where we need to add documents in, All right? There's a Virginia listing. So here's what you're gonna do. In the documents tab, you should see a button here that says add. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add. And we have some options here. Do we wanna add them from the computer, DocuSign forms or zip forms? All right, so we all have DocuSign forms. That's the one we're gonna show you today. If you are a zip forms user, right? Or you prefer to use zip forms, you can actually use, if you have an account with zip forms, which is free through NAR, um, if you have forms in zip forms, we can actually bring in your forms from your zip form account. So a couple different options here. I'm going to focus on DocuSign today. If you're a user of zip forms and you might, or you just like that library better, um, or you have templates built out, built out in zip forms, get in touch with me right this week. I'm happy to show you this afternoon how we can connect your zip forms account and we can pull in documents from there. For most of us, right, if you, if you don't have a, a zip forms account, we're going to use DocuSign forms. So when I click on DocuSign forms, this is the screen that should pop up. Now, if this is maybe the first time you're in DocuSign or you're really uh, working on this, something else might've popped up that's asking you to validate your NRDS number. The very bottom right-hand corner, there's a little hyperlink. It says continue without validation or something along those lines. Just click that box. And once you do, you should then come to this screen here. All right, so add forms from DocuSign. And then we're all trying to get to this screen here. Questions on that? Uh, gift, nope, if you're, a, if you're an NBAR, uh, if your NAR provides you a free zip form account, um, and if you're an NBAR member, you can get all of your forms from there um, at no cost. All right, so once we're here, guys, I want you to the, just note here before we start clicking on anything, we've got two drop downs. okay? The first one is, are we wanting to look at libraries or groups? So let's leave this selected, libraries, and then it says select library. So I'm gonna click this drop down, and you each should see some libraries, okay? Now, if you're missing libraries here, I'm gonna answer that in just a second. Um, now, you guys should see KW and your market center. So KW uh, 319, as an example, okay? Uh, for Fairfax, KW 541, within that folder, you should see your McLean disclosure and your vested disclosure. So like office specific documents. I will also have broken credit, credit letters in there for everybody by the end of this week. Okay, they're all submitted to DocuSign. Few people are waiting on those. So that's your KW, that's your local folder. You then should also see, like for a lot of our agents, you might see NBAR. And this is exactly that, right? It's just the entire library of all the NBAR docs. So if I wanted to go grab an addendum, you know, I could go in here and find that addendum and add it into my room. Does that make sense? Now, if you're supposed to have Maryland or DC or West Virginia, and you don't see them here, it's because we haven't validated your NRDS number properly. Okay, and once you do that and they validate your NRDS number, you will see those libraries appear here in DocuSign. Okay, so that's just libraries. Just think of it exactly that, right? All the forms, I'm just going to look in the library. Now, when you're taking a listing for Sandy, I don't want you to you know, have to go pick them out every single time one by one and start bringing them in, right? And go fishing every time. That's what the second option is for. So here you can say, let's go to the groups. So instead of library, switch over to groups. Inside of the groups, you will see, right? Your group for your market center. So in this case, let's go to Fairfax. Is this buyer agency we're doing? Is this a purchase contract we're writing? Or is it listing agency? Okay, I'm listing Sandy's home. So I need all of my listing agency paperwork. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And we've already put together for you the DPOR disclosure, the exclusive right to sell, the lead-based paint disclosure, the useful information form. So instead of going and finding them all, right, you could just do a select all, right, uh, right there, and you can add them all in. 
Now, if Sandy's house was built in 1994, and I know I don't need the lead-based paint disclosure, I can just uncheck it there, right? And go ahead and say, let's add in these three forms. Does that make sense? So they're in a group for you for buyer agency, for listing agency, and for purchase contract uh, for Virginia. Okay, those are the groups. Make sense? Yes. Any questions on the difference between the libraries and the groups? Now, coming by the end of this month, so it's gonna happen in January, I'm, I've been promised, right? You'll be able to take these groups and create templates inside of DocuSign. So I'll be able to take that group of forms and put in my information, my license number and save it all. So every time I pull up a listing agreement, all those fields are already pre-filled out and I can just recall it from the template, okay? Um, it was originally supposed to launch on December 15th. They found a security issue. Um, they didn't want to release it, but I am being told it is coming. So um, again, uh, templates sometime in January in DocuSign. We can do templates right now in zip form. So if it's an immediate have to have, I've got a good solution for you over there. All right. Any questions? Kyle, on the so, yeah. Go ahead. Yes. Kyle, uh, so once that is uh, confirmed that it's going to be working, are you going to teach us how to do that? Yeah, so as soon as templates are available, right, 100%, I'll have some classes on that, Antoinette, and I'll put out a training video that you can follow on how to set up your templates. Thank you. You're welcome. And so what some people are excited about that is, you know, you could create a uh, purchase agreement with VA contingency, right, with uh, FHA financial, and you can put them in packets so you can pull them all and have them pre kind of pre-filled out. So yes, absolutely looking forward to that um, as step two later this month. And Cal, also right here, too, if we needed to add an additional uh, form from here, we will go back up to um, DocuSign form group to get the live, the other forms so we can yep. put that so you, in there, too. Yep. So you could go into uh, the so here's the deal. Uh, when you check, check these off, they, they toggle back and forth. So what I would do, Esther, is go in here and say, let me bring in my listing agency, the group first. OK, maybe mm -hmm. minus lead based paint. And then what you can do is then you can go back up and say, OK, now let me go grab any of the extra ones from the library I might need. Right. If I need to go okay. grab that addendum, DocuSign forms and from the library. And from here, you can you can start selecting multiple forms. So I can say, OK, you know, listing addendum. Mm -hmm. Right. Grab that one. I also need to go get the uh, well and septic. I know that doesn't make sense right now on the listing agency side, but you guys get my point there. If I needed to yeah. add anything, there's the extra two and I can add them in. Now I've got the five that I need for my listing for Sandy Schumer. All right, thank you. Yep, good question. Uh, from select the library, how do we know which one is Latin Gateway? I know there's numbers next to it. Yep, you will, um, only, you will only see yours, Orna. I'm a part of seven market centers, so you're seeing them all in my account. When you log in, like it says KW 420, and you'll only see Loudon Gateway. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, so um, if you are trying to validate your NRDS number, try to validate it, look for uh, Virginia Association of Realtors instead of your local association. All right, now I just want to show you guys here. Um, I'm going to delete a couple of these because I don't need them, right? So I just want to show you if you bring in a form and you're like, oh, I don't need well and septic, you can right click it and delete it, okay, out of, um, out of the room. So I've got useful information, listing agreement, D4 and exclusive right to sell. And let's delete this one. I don't need this one either. Perfect. So now we're maybe we're down to these three. All right. So the way this works in DocuSign is, is that you're going to do this in kind of three different steps. Okay. You're going to uh, fill out the documents here. Right. So you're going to fill out the documents. Uh, and then we're going to actually move them into what's called an envelope and assign the signees. And then we mess with signatures and initials. Okay. So it's two different things. You're going to fill out the contract. Then we're going to worry about signatures and, and that in the second part. So what I do here is uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on exclusive right to sell as an example. So let's go ahead and open up this form here. I would go ahead and click on it. Any of the information I went ahead and put into the details page, right? Like the, um, the information is going to show up in here, right? So it's going to, it's going to show Sandy as the seller, right? When I pulled the address out of the details page and filled that in. And then I would go in and I could fill out this contract just like I normally would. All right. So I'm a broker, but I'm not going to get into a broker class right now. Right. So you guys can learn how to fill out, uh, fill out that contract there. And, uh, and then once you filled everything out, then you're going to come up top here and you're going to click save and close. All right. 
Again, this is not where we're messing with signatures or initials. You're not dropping signatures. You're not dropping initials. You're just filling out the contract. All right, so once I'm done that, I would click save and close. This is where guys, if you, uh, if, if you find any errors on these forms, I need you to tell me, okay? Um, we found a couple of them this week, like one or two of them this week that are still unresolved. I think the other ones are already fixed. Um, so I just want you to be aware. We do have the 2021 forms in here now, right? So just be aware of that. I've gotten that question a few times. These are the updated contracts. Um, they have a direct license with NBAR. So they're responsible for making sure they have the updated ones. But whenever we get new forms, there's always a chance that like one of these boxes doesn't work or a button doesn't work. I need you to tell me so I can turn it in. All right. Um, so just keep keep an eye on that. If you have an issue, let me know. So I'll click save and close. Cal, does it already have like uh, Keller Williams information in there or do we need to put that in? Like the address, Keller Williams, Fairfax Gateway? So it doesn't have the bottom section. Like it does have your brokerage name. So the top, like the brokerage name automatically fills in from your contact record. Okay. But at the bottom where it says like broker cell phone number, work number, um, those things need to be filled in um, okay. there. Okay. Okay. All right. So we fill out all three of them here. Now notice guys, like if I go to deport disclosure, I don't need to do anything with this, right? Because the only thing on here is asking for an address, which is going to auto fill in from the details page. Um, let me add it in again. All right. So then it's there. Let's see. Is that not auto fill in? Hi, Kai. Um, on the hey, brokers, yeah. on the broker side. So, yeah. what, um, let's say I fill up all my form in there, address and everything correctly, including the other side of broker. Yep. But when the document pull up, it doesn't automatic generate auto, um, information in there. Like, you say, that, you say that again, Gift. So let's say under detail, mm -hmm. I will put all my full information, like broker phone number, license and stuff in there, whatever it needs to be filled up. Okay. I also fill up the other broker detail. Right. Right. Yep. So, like, dot loop automatic fill in for you when you go to the document and the listing of a buyer contract. Okay. So, then we still have to fill out again. So, is there anything that we can avoid doing that? Or Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at it for you. Just realize that this is listing agent, right? So, I need the place that's asking for my listing agent information. This should auto fill in. If it's asking about the broker, Right. That's a separate like data field that they're asking you to fill in. So I'll go back and look at it for you, Gift. And if there's not a spot for it, we'll ask if we can get one. Um, yes. But it should it should auto fill into here where it's asking you for your agent information. Yeah, it, it fill up some part. Like, for example, it fill up the Keller William part and didn't fill up the phone number and didn't fill up the full address. It's kind of a missing stuff. OK, I will right, we'll go look at it as we go through. Sure. Okay. OK, all right. So fill out the contract. That's step number one. Right now, I need to send this to Sandy for signature. That's where we're at right now. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select which of these documents need to go to Sandy for signature. So I could say, all right, I need to sell her, I need to send her the exclusive right to sell. I need to send her the D4 disclosure and I need to send her useful information. So what I'm doing here is I'm selecting the documents that need to go out for signature. Okay. So I did that by selecting the little bubble there. Once I select them, we get a new toolbar that pops up right here. Okay, new toolbar, and there's a pen icon right in the middle, and it says create envelope. All right, so for DocuSign, this is the kind of the, the, the language they use. So you're going to create your documents, you put them in an envelope, you send them out for signature. All right, so this is what we're doing. So we're selecting the documents we want, we're putting them into an envelope. Okay, that envelope is going to appear, and it's going to look like this. Okay, so this is what's called an envelope. Now, if you're a DocuSign user, this is probably where you're like, all right, I'm good to go. I know how to do all this stuff. And you're kind of moving on. If you've never used DocuSign before, this is the spot. You just got to learn it once or twice. And I honestly feel like if you can do it twice, I never hear from you again if you run into an issue here. So let's go through it. So what you're doing is you're just naming the envelope. What's it called? So I'm going to call this Sandy Shender Listing Paperwork. Just so I know what it is when I'm getting emails coming back and forth. I have an idea about what this is. These are the three documents I'm sending out for signature. If I notice that I forgot any, I could add some in by clicking this room docs button here and go back and add them in. And this is also where you can reorder, okay, reorder the documents so the client sees them in the right order. So I wanna make sure that Sandy sees the, uh, the listing agreement first. So you see that when I hover over top of this, I get a four cursor, I can drag it over and drop it, right? Exclusive right to sell, deep war disclosure, useful information. If that's the way I want it to show up, then good, right? That's the order in which you're gonna put things in. 
So it's almost like a docu, uh, I mean, that loop, right? Yep. Same thing, Antoinette. Yep, yep, exactly that. So just envelope and then in the order here. And this is the last part here. So it's saying add recipients to the envelope. What I want you to think about here is I want you to think about who needs to sign. Okay, that's really what's being asked here. So who needs to sign? So add recipients to the envelope. I'll say add recipient. Now, guys, if you're using DocuSign forms or zip forms, okay, if, they, if they're a form and they're templated, you can now use the pre-tag roles, meaning they know exactly where all the initials and all the signatures need to go. You don't need to drop those things in. Right, so I'm gonna say use pre-tag roles, and then it's gonna ask you, okay, who needs to sign? So here's the way that this works. Who needs to sign? Seller one needs to sign, okay? And then from the dropdown over here, who is seller one? And you should see Sandy because she's there because of she's in the details section, right? So I select Sandy, and now Sandy's number one. And if I hover over top of the documents here, it's telling me that Sandy's gonna sign the deep board disclosure, the exclusive right to sell and useful information. Right now, we don't have a seller two or any other sellers here, so I would skip those over. Uh, you can have up to set. There are four pre-tagged seller rules, though. Right, so if you're in an estate situation and there's you know, multiple sellers, you can get them all in here. Then the last thing is, guys, the exclusive right to sell needs to be signed. Right, so we need to make sure that the broker signs uh, this agreement. Now, in our Northern Virginia market centers and in Richmond as well. Right. If you hit certain criteria, you are allowed to sign the agency agreement yourself. Okay, your market center about a month and a half ago now probably sent out a Google sheet saying, here are the criteria. And if you agree to it, you can sign your own agreement. The reason we did that was because of this right here. So this, the broker does need to sign because the broker has to sign within, um, you know, DocuSign or, or whatever your platform is. It can't be signed in command. So can, I'm I, can I interrupt you for a second on this? Yes, yeah, Jason. I was doing... Um, a landlord mm -hmm. um, lease agreement yesterday yes. and some of the documents listed it as there's only one landlord yes. but it was listed as landlord and then another one was landlord one okay so it it made me like so he, he once we went over to uh zip form it yep um you know he was a different color because he was categorized as landlord and then okay. landlord one on a different document Okay. Um, what can you, uh, Stacey, can you send me an email on what the document was where he was landlord one? Okay. And then yeah. also there's only two places for tenants. There uh -huh. needs to be at least more tenants. Okay. So um, this, so let me show you this and I'll go back and answer that question. Okay. Okay. All right. So just want to make sure we're clear on this because this is probably the, the most common uses. Seller one's going to sign, then listing broker is going to sign. Now, if you have the authority to sign, this is where you're going to select yourself, right? I know it says listing broker, but that's the pre-tagged role. So if you have the authority to sign, you would select your name out of the dropdown, click add selected, right? And it would show you that you are now going to sign as the broker, right? So it would look like this. So Sandy is going to sign and then I would sign, okay? That way you're not waiting on the brokers to sign everything. You still are going to upload it for compliance. So we're still going to look at it, but we're just trying to eliminate that gap where you're waiting on a broker to sign your listing agreement. Now you can turn that right over to your client. So here you go, right? And then turn everything in for compliance. Kyle, okay. uh, back to the other person just asked, right? So I have the same issue here. Yep. So if you see, look at your screen, now you have three documents, mm -hmm. but when you do the selection, you only allow to say, select two documents, which I see in your exclusive, right? And DPOR, mm -hmm. you don't have another useful information in the option when you pre-select it. If you go back, you can tell. So look, then, so like Nope, so hold on, hold on, hold on, let's one at a time, right? Because I don't want to cause confusion for anybody. So if I do add recipient pre tag roles and I click seller one, if I hover over this, it's telling me these are the three documents that seller one is going to sign. They have a spot for them to sign on the deep war, the exclusive right to sell, and the useful information. So it doesn't show useful right in here. See, where, where do they sign? So it's only select seller one, show up, DPOR. Yep, so, so GIFT, you have to put your cursor over where it says DPOR and it'll show you all the documents that are there. They're just kind of scrunched down. So oh, it's oh, okay, they're hiding. DPOR, yep, DPOR okay. exclusive right to sell and useful information. So she's signing all three of those. Okay, got it. Okay, and then listing broker, Kyle Holleran. Now, let me go back. Let me go to Stacy's question. Okay, so Stacy, this is, uh, I know we were trying to communicate last night over you know, Messenger. Um, so that's using pre-tagged roles, okay? 
I can ask them to put in more pre-tagged roles, but I think there's only two slots for the landlord to sign on the actual document. That's why it, it is the way it is. You can always though, you don't have to use pre-tagged roles. So I can come in here and I can say, I'm gonna add the other two in by email address, right? And so this is gonna be landlord number three, right? And their email for landlord number three is gonna be blah, 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 at blah, blah, blah. Then I'm gonna come in and I'm at another one and it's gonna be landlord number four, right? Okay, but at that point, you also have to physically add them, their yeah. name to the beginning and then have yeah. everybody initial. And there's right, not a whole lot of space. There's not right, a lot sorry. of space for names. I hear what you're saying, but it was, that, was it different in dot loop? Did they have four pre-tag roles in dot loop? Because what I'm saying is the tenant agreement only has two spaces for signatures. That's why it's pre-tagged that way. If you want to add anything on top of that, it can be more. So I hear you. Um, this is the way we would do it though right now. And I don't think it's any different than the way it was in dot loop. Okay. Okay. All right. So let me eliminate those just for everybody else that would cause confusion. Now, here's the other thing, guys. Uh, last, last situation here. Um, let's say you need a broker signature. Okay. So it's not, you can't sign it. Um, just select listing broker. You're not going to select anything from the drop down, right? So you would just actually leave that blank. And this is where you can add in the email either for your broker or the compliance email for each of your offices. So in my case, if it was Fairfax, it's Fairfax compliance at VA Alliance group. Okay. So you can still put in the, the broker's email here, or if you're in my office, it can be Kyle at, you know, kyleallen.com, but you can also change that out if you needed to, to be your actual broker's email address. Okay. Okay. Kyle, let me recap, uh, see if I understand correctly. Yep. So new agents, we are not uh, authorized to uh, sign as a broker. So in um, my case, I select my broker, right? Because we don't have assigned the office, the uh, compliance office yet. So I just select my broker's email, right? So what you're going to do, Antoinette, for you, you would click on, you would just select listing broker here. Okay, the listing broker needs to sign. Okay. And then in here... When it, when it brings in, this is where you would put in your broker's email. And, and for Antoinette, for you, if you needed a broker signature, yours is Chantilly Compliance. That's your email address at vaalliancegroup.com. Okay, so this is what it would look like for you if you needed, uh, you know, Ken's signature or whatever it's going to be, right? It could look like this. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Now, I do believe, guys, it's three transactions. Antoinette, I know you've done a few transactions, so... Touch base with your market center leadership staff and say, am I allowed to sign my own agreement? Can I get that Google sheet? If so, you know, that's why we allowed you to sign it. We make it a little bit easier for you. Okay. Now, last thing on this, guys, and then let's move on. I just want to make sure we can get to the next part here and answer a few questions um, is this. Right next to the, the names over there, you see some numbers. It says one and says two. So what this means is, is this is the order in which the email goes out. Okay, so if I send it like this, both Sandy and I would receive it to sign at the same time. Some people want to change that, right? I want to see Sandy's signatures first. So I will make myself position number two, which means I or the next person in order will receive the email after Sandy signs. Okay, so for spouses, you might want to have them both number one. So they both get it at the same time. Then once they finish signing, then it would come to you as an email saying, now it's your turn to sign. Right. Any I'm questions? so sorry. Yeah, no, you're yes, fine. I, yeah uh, how can I get to the email? It was so quick for my office. So if you can put it again, I can take a picture. And so that way, because I have to do one contract this afternoon. All right, sounds good. And I'm going to go ahead and put it into the chat here for everybody to see. And if you're in one of our Alliance Group offices, just go ahead and it's just going to replace your market center name. So it's Chantilly Compliance at vaalliancegroup.com. Okay. In the chat for Antonetta. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I just had uh, want to make sure I heard you correctly. <clears throat> so if you have a husband and a wife, because this is not the first time I've taken this class, so I want to make sure. <laughs> yeah. Last time, I thought you had to do like one, two, you know, three, four. So you can put one and one for a husband and wife. Yes, they it both doesn't. It yeah, exactly, time. Michelle. So I could say I want Michelle and Joe to receive it at the same time. You guys would both be number ones, right? Okay. Then Perfect. after both of you sign, I'm number okay. two, then it would come to me. Yep. Okay, awesome. And that might be the way to do it, guys, because realize if it was Michelle one, Joe two, one of the spouses is going to be like, well, I got the email, and the other one's like, I didn't. 
right? If you right. send it at the same time, then everyone gets that email that's supposed to at the same time. So there's no confusion. Yep, good question. Okay, I didn't catch that last time. So I'm glad I'm doing this again. Yep, so Deborah K, it's rest in compliance at VAlliancegroup.com. All right, so this is where we can add a little message down here to the bottom, like, uh, hi, Sandy, here's the listing agreement we talked about, blah, blah, blah. And we could uh, go ahead and put a message in there as we send this. I wanna point out, we could also save and close this envelope at this point. So if I'm gonna go meet Sandy tonight and I wanted to prep all of this, so when I get there, I can say, great, now Sandy, I'm gonna send you the contract right now, I'm here for signature. You could have already done all of this, right? And had it just sitting up into this point, kind of waiting, and then you can open back up again, right? So save and close is one option. Now in this case, let's say I'm getting ready to send out the paperwork, I'm gonna go ahead and click next, and we'll move on to the next screen. This is the last step here, guys, right? So once you, once you put the envelope details in and it knows who's supposed to sign, now is when you're gonna be able to mess with signatures and initials and all those types of things, okay? So let's look at this screen here and just get oriented. So here's my, here's my listing agreement. As I scroll down, here are the pre-tagged roles, right? So because I just have one seller, it's showing me here, it's yellow, right? That's, that's where Sandy is gonna sign. And then show me where the broker is going to sign. So if you use pre-tagged roles, that's why all of these boxes are here where they're supposed to be. Okay, does that make sense? Top left corner up here, I just want to point this out. We have a color code. So Sandy is yellow. I am blue. So you're just basically, it's just telling you like, okay, that's where Sandy's going to sign. That's where Kyle's going to sign there. So like Stacy, I hear you. I'll, I'll check on it for you though. Like here's why you can have four sellers. I think the tenant agreement just has two spots for those people, but I'll check on it for you. Okay. Um, and then we're looking through the contract here. If I keep scrolling guys all the way down to the bottom of the listing agreement, um, I can see where it says, you know, broker sales manager, um, you know, that's where they're gonna sign. You know, I scroll back through here and just check all my work that I did, make sure everything looks good before I send it out. So um, gift, like this is pulling in from my details page uh, because that's where I put that information in as the listing agent, but then the broker doesn't have a section there. So I would have typed that in on the document itself. But again, let me check on that for you and I'll see if we can make that a little bit easier, but hopefully your information is coming through the way it's supposed to. As I keep going down, here's your deep board disclosure. Um, I put the wrong one in there, that's why I grabbed that one. Um, all right, so there's your deep board disclosure and where everyone needs to sign on that, okay? So Kyle, this, yeah. Sorry, yep. I follow everything you do just now and mm -hmm. then I can see the pre tap I my signature a different color but then from the client, it not go through all the, the document, or at least um, the first document, which is DPOR. Yep. And then the listing agreement is doesn't go into. That's why I want, don't know what happened. Wait, um, so you're, you're saying you don't see all of your documents here when you scroll through? I, right, I see all the document and everything. You, I mm -hmm. just copy you the way you do. I see my signature different color from a client. Yep. But the only thing I didn't see is the client did not pre-tag to the other document. It's only one document. Okay, Kip, let's get together after this. I'll message you and sure. I'll jump on Zoom with you and look at it with you, okay? Sure, okay, thank yep. you. Okay, so there's your pre-tag rules. Now, a couple things I wanna show you on the screen here, which is, you know, this is already would have been filled out in the documents tab, right? So you're not really clicking back into this document. At this point though, you can go in and you can do some different markup tools uh, you do have this little pencil over here. So markup tools, I can draw a line through it. So let's say I maybe spelled, uh, it's, it's supposed to be Dale Court, right? I can go through and cross that out. Uh, there's a markup tool for that. Over here, there's a few things you might want to use, something like the text box. So I could come over and I could drag this text box over and kind of make my correction. Now, any of these tools over here on the left, when you drop them onto the screen, you actually use over on here on the right to kind of fill it in. So over here, I can write Dale Court, Maybe if that's what it's supposed to be, uh, this is a read-only field. No one needs to fill it in. And, you know, there it is. So I can do that. Now that I made it. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us, though, with those changes, do we have to do anything about collaboration right down there so that everybody sees? Since I had like five different people that I was doing, yep. they, couldn't all, they couldn't all see that I had made a change. So I think I have to do something with collaboration. Does that sound right? Uh, you mean down here? Yes. Reci yeah, a, recipients. yeah. So, yeah. so did you put market as read only or no? I, I unchecked it. I mean, there was. Okay. If it's read only, then everyone should be able to see it on the contract, Stacey, but you can do collaboration and do all, all recipients. 
and they all can just see it basically. Um, oh. But, but okay. yeah, okay. So that's all on right, there. So I should have, so I should have done on the top, I should have said read, on, read only. Correct. For everybody. So I didn't have to go specifically into each five different people and no. do it each time. No, not to my knowledge. I've, I've done this a couple times. I've heard that. I, if I put it on one time and do it as read only, everyone should go see it. Okay. okay. So you're under Sandy there. So I didn't know if only Sandy can read that. And then the other parties can't. Because when I you know. do preview, those that that court was not going to be listed. Okay. We'll go. I'll look at it when we go to the recent preview. Okay. All right. Give me a second. Kaya? Okay. Yep. Is there a way we can like, is there like a, 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 some kind of a tool that we can erase? Like, let's say you said word and I'm like, oh no, it should have been court. Instead of going back to zip form and change it, um, instead of putting a red line, is there a way, is there some kind of a tool you can erase it so it looks neat? No, nope, it's no longer, it's, it's, it's templated when you get to this point. Now, what I could do is I can just go back here, right? And I could go back to the envelope and switch it out with the corrected form, right? And then come uh, back to this stage, okay? But once I get into this screen here, I can't go in and type any of this stuff in. Okay, so Orna, in that case, I could go back here. I could hit go back, go back yeah. to my envelope, and I could switch out this uh, listing agreement here with the with the updated one. All right, so exclusive right to sell. I could delete oh. this, go back and add the new one, and then come back in here and it would be cleaned up, right? But once you get into this screen here, it is locked. Hey, Kyle, okay, so you cannot erase, or it has to be just so if I want to make a correction, it'll be just that red yep. line. Correct. Can yep, you right tell me how you did the red line on top of the road? Like, where did you go? Yep, so over here on the left-hand side, you have these two, the, these are the two main ones I want you to focus on, standard fields and then markup tools. Uh, markup well, tools are fine, that's the one there. Oh, hold on, Gift. I hold, see on, hold, on. hold on, Kim, you're up next, go ahead. Oh, just real quick, can you put that text box over the um, uh, road so that it'll clean it up? Uh, I haven't tried it yet, let's Instead see. crossing it out? I used to do that in dot loop. I did that yesterday and it worked fine. It, okay. you did that it way it just looks a little cleaner and then they don't know you made a mistake. Yeah. Right. So, Stacey, so Stacey, you said you put it over and it did, it was fine? Uh-huh, yes. All right, cool. All right, so if it looked like that, you might not even know. Good one, good one. Good work, team, I like that, thank you. So if you do that, oh, this is before they signed, Never mind. I was gonna say, if you do that, wouldn't you have to get them to initial it? if they had already signed it, if you were. Right, now they would have already signed it, but, but let's use that as an example. Uh, and you're okay. right, Michelle, now they haven't signed it yet, so we could probably get around that. If there okay. was something that needed to be to initial, okay? This is the spot you do it in though. So up top here, it says Sandy, and I've got this drop down here and I can come over and I can drop in an initial for Sandy. Okay, gotcha. so that's how you do it. So I click Sandy first, then I go over and grab her initial. Okay. Now, I like this, quick thing. If you're gonna, if you're in a small spot, <laughs> all right, you need to pull over multiple, Go ahead and, and minimize the initial as small as you can or whatever it's going to be first. Then go over and grab the next person's initial and it'll automatically make it the same size, right? So you're not resizing all of the initial boxes. Okay. okay. So that's Kyle, one thing. quick question. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yep. Uh, how do you cover some existing text? In, like, you know, how do you make that box, your, like in your example there, Mm -hmm. uh, it's white. How, how do you make the entire box white? Is there a way to colorize that so you can cover up text? Um, so that's what I was looking at here. So when you put in the text box down here, there is these drop downs. Uh, this is where we're going to probably get really good because a lot of you guys are asking me questions now that no one's ever asked me. Um, but this is probably where you could go ahead and um, let's, I'm trying to see if we could do these formatting tools. Um, I don't know the answer to that right now. But you know what I mean, right? When when we do from dot loop, we want right. to cover something. We just typing on top of the white box. Yeah, yeah, I got you saying. Right. I mean, we could we could try it, guys. I'll I'll try it for you. Just drop in a text box. Honestly, might do that. Like if I just drop the text box over here and made it read only, right? Like that might white out the whole thing. We may not see it. I think just in this preview screen, we're seeing behind it, but that might be the white box you're looking for. Okay, so text only. Okay, great. Okay. So then, yeah, without oh, without so without anything only. actually like in the field. Yeah. Good, good questions. All right, so then that, let me just show you the last little thing here with initials. Um, if there's multiple places, guys, where people need to initial, uh, like maybe in a counter offer or something along those lines, if you click on the screen, hold it down and highlight the initials together, um, let me pull them away from this box a little bit, right? If you highlight the initials together, 
you can copy and paste them as a set now. So instead of having to go back every time in one by one by one, I can do a control C for copy, control V for paste. And now I could drag, right? I could go ahead and drag this, uh, these two boxes together um, around the screen if I wanted to, All right? In addition to that, if these were at the bottom of the page, let's say I'm countering something and I go ahead and I copy them together, right? As you scroll down on the page, if you just hit paste, it'll put them on the same spot on the next page. Meaning if you put them at the bottom of the page on the lines where they're supposed to be and just scroll down, it'll go on the bottom of every single page when you hit paste. All right, so that's a quick tip too to make it a little bit easier for you as well. All right, so Stacy, I guess this is where I was saying I hear you on uh, multiple people, but if you add someone by email address, they may not be pre-tagged, but you should see them in the drop down here and then add the initial over to where they would need to sign, which I know you sounds like you already have. Oh, yeah, Kyle, that's sorry. what I had to do. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Kai. When you show, show one more time about the copy um, yeah. initial. Sure. Yeah. So when you uh, have the initials in here, and it can be two, it could be five. Uh -huh. If you click on the screen and highlight them together. Okay. Highlight first. Yep. And then I hit Control C for copy, Control V then for paste, and I'll get a, I'll get the boxes of them together, and I can now move those boxes around onto the screen to where they need to initial down here together. Right, and then Control V, and we'll move this one over here. Where then the initial over here. So just a lot faster than dragging from the tray every time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good, good questions, guys. I honestly just by like just like teaching the basics here. I haven't dug into a lot of these formatting fields over here. So thank you for the questions to all of you, and I'll I'll be able to dig into those too, and we'll even get even better at what we're looking at now. All right. So at this point, um, what you can do is you can go through the, all the documents if you want to. I just point this out up top here. We have a recipient preview. And if you click on that, you know, you can look at what does this look like when it comes to your consumer? So uh, Kyle or Sandy um, here. So I can look at it. What does it look like when I'm Sandy? Um, this is what it would look like to her, right? So the color coding goes away because there's not two initial boxes. This is just what Sandy would see. And these are all the places that she would be initialing as well as the pre tag rules. But did you notice though on your, Sandy says court, but when you go to you, um, yours says road or it's scratched out. Yeah, it looks messy. It was yeah. that collaboration thing. I think that had something to do with the collaboration or the view only thing that you checked. Okay. You see how, you know, they're yep. both a little bit different. I see it a little bit different. Hold on. Let's, let's see if we can figure it out together. Hold on. Give me one okay. uh, let's go back to this and we'll do collaboration. Recipients can collaborate. When I did mine, it was recipients can collaborate. I only did the first checkbox. Okay, maybe that's all it needs to be then. I don't know what, because I didn't really know what else it meant. Might have stumped me on this one. I might have to figure this out for you after we get off the call. Okay. I'll, I'll, look, I'll look at it for you, though, but I understand what you guys are saying. So this is this type of stuff, like, thank you. I want to hear this feedback so I know, um, and you guys are experiencing that. So I'll look Thanks. at that, Stacey, and I'll give you guys an update. That used to happen in loop too. If you did a text box over stuff, yeah, it, same exact thing happened, and I could never figure out why. All right, I'll figure it out. There's definitely uh, there's definitely some solutions there, so I'll figure that one out. It's a good one. Okay, let me just get through this here, so if anyone's on the class, we can kind of hit the basics. So, at this point, guys, I would go ahead and hit send, right, and it would go to Sandy for her first set of signatures. She would sign once she completes the signing because I was number two. Then I would be the next one to sign. Okay, makes sense, and I would get that. Now, everyone keeps asking this question too. Everyone that's an assignee, once everyone signs, everybody gets an email that says completed signing, here's a PDF. So if you're used to like sending an extra copy to somebody, know that they are getting one when everyone signs, they do get a completed PDF copy of all the documents, okay? Um, on that note of it. So I'm gonna back out here. I'm not actually gonna send it so we don't send it over to Sandy. And let's wrap up with a few things. And then I've got some homework to do to figure out a couple of these things you guys have asked me about. Um, all right, so let me come back to here, save and close. I'm gonna come back to documents here. All right, so once we once these three go out, okay, once these three go out here and they're signed, um, then what happens is you'll get another set of three that have a green check mark that say signed. Okay, so those are the three like PDF copies that you can download with all the Email. signatures on there. Oh, what's that? Oh. Would it be coming to my email address or to- yeah, You'll get an email as well. You'll get an email as well. It says that everything's been signed. Here's a completed copy. But you can come okay. into your room and you'll see the three signed copies here as well. 
You can either delete these original ones if you don't want them in there, if they're just kind of cluttering things up. Um, if you're writing an offer, you might want to keep the original offer document here, because if you're writing a second offer, you might need to go in and edit that for your second offer. Okay. Uh, so the original copy will always stay plus your, your completed copy as well. Uh, Kyle, of, you let you recommend to delete some of the stuff for example like we sent to the buyer one buyer to and then it's been negotiated back and forward and then we have to resign again it's very confusing mm -hmm. which document is already you know i pick it you know what i mean it's because it's pdf is already automatic generate after the sign yeah no i mean it's same thing in dot loop as soon as signatures are on the document it's locked you can't edit that document again or the signatures will be erased so you'd have to take that pdf maybe add them by room participant and then drop in the initials on where your client needs to counter. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you can't make that document anything other than a PDF once it's been signed. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, quick question. Also question. Can we uh -huh. rename the, can we rename the document? Can you do what? I'm sorry. Rename. Yes. So if you right click on the document here and you want to change this, you can click right click, you can rename. So I okay. can rename this, whatever it's going to be. Um, and then two more things here. I want to get through mm -hmm. actions. If you guys are for organization purposes, when I'm in the documents tab, I can create extra folders. So that's what I've done. I come in and I'll say, hey, here are my ratified documents and I can create an extra folder, right? And now I have two folders in my room and I'll move those three signed copies, right? I'll do it with this one here. You can select them, say move, and I wanna move it into the folder in my room, right? And so you can move documents so that they're organized like a little bit better in here so that you know, you know what is what, all right? And then here's the last thing. Um, if you go ahead and you get an offer that comes in, let's say someone makes an offer on Sandy's property, I could go ahead and I could add in that offer, right, from my computer. So if someone sent me that offer and I'm gonna grab it, you know, it's this one here. I can go ahead and upload that in. Now, because it's a PDF, you're not clicking on it right now to add anything in because it's not a template, right? So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna move it, you know, right from here into an envelope get into that next screen where we were just dropping in initials and signatures. And that's where you can go and you can basically counter, right? Your, your offer by using those tools over there that I just showed you. Okay. Now in the compliance class, what I show you is now the reason we connected this room from the very beginning with command is now imagine this is our compliance class. And this is where I'll pick up tomorrow in that class. Now we have signed agreements by everybody. How do I turn in my listing agreement to my office so that we get everything checked? I'm just going to be able to come into command, hit add a file, and it says DocuSign because it knows what room it's now connected to, and it will go find all three of those documents over in that room. I'll say, here's my signed listing agreement, right? Hit assign, and then there you go, right? And now I can hit submit for Market Center for compliance. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense to you. That's why we're starting the room from command so that it all works together. We don't have to download anything to the Market Center for compliance. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go work on a couple things. Um, what I'm gonna do is let me put in the chat here really quickly, guys. Some of you guys are, I know, you know, maybe the first time, second time you've seen it for some people in the in the chat here. This is the DocuSign video, right? So it's basically this class just on demand. Nope. Um, so if you guys have any questions about that, you can jump on and watch that one as a repeat again, all right? Um, who feels like they need to jump on with me? I'm Michelle, I got you a uh, gift. I'm gonna send you a message. You guys are obviously working in it pretty hardcore. I wanna get with you today and make sure you guys are all set up. Anyone else have any major issues today that we need to get with to make sure that DocuSign is connected and working properly? Kyle, I don't have a major issue, but I just have a quick question. How do we, so you've got all these add to file or whatever, if you go back to your opportunity, how do you go to just your document, like your room? Can you just go there through... Yes. Okay. So once you create it, okay. So I have to create it from DocuSign. But that's why I said do it when you create the opportunity, then it's just set yep. up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to DocuSign.com. I can log okay. in directly to DocuSign.com. Here's the one caveat to this. It's not even a caveat. It's just you have to know the click. When you log in to DocuSign, when you log into DocuSign.com, DocuSign has two sides. They have a side called e-signature and this side called rooms. And we use rooms. So when you okay. log in, it, it looks like this. Just click on your initials up here and click on switch to rooms. And now here are all of your rooms and I can go in and write up an addendum for Sandy. Um, and I can just enter this way and see all of my rooms and just go back and forth between them all. Okay. Okay. So, okay. so if you have, oh, 
Sorry. Oh, go ahead. You first. So if you have, because I have before this, I had my own DocuSign, which I love. So <clears throat> how, so when I log into DocuSign.com. You're logging in with your, your KW email, Orna. Like remember yesterday you and right. I talked like, yeah. Yeah, this is your KW DocuSign account. It doesn't have anything to do with your old DocuSign account. Right. No, no, but you're right. <clears throat> but when I want to get into the room, let's say I'm in a hotel, like you said, mm -hmm. I just log into uh, DocuSign.com, but then I go under my name and put rooms. Yeah, you log in under your Orna at KW email and then yeah. you go to rooms okay. and see everything. Yep. Thank you. Okay. And then this was just another um, thing yeah. that when I just got to sign documents all back and execute it. Okay. Um, and it's just more of a, an appearance thing, but okay. all of the signatures, um, you know, they kind of cover up the date, you know, can the signatures be moved over like pre yeah, so like, moved over instead of me having to move them? Yeah. So here's the deal. The way that's pre tagged right now is just the way DocuSign has it. Anyone that uses NVRF forms are all using the same library. Like it's not like our library, Stacy, when we get templates, if you want to shrink those and make them smaller and add more pre tag roles, you'll be able to do that. Um, okay. So let me see what I can do. But like, again, just realize that today is the worst it's ever going to be. And I think people are absolutely okay. But some of these things we can clean up either if they can't, I'll help you do it in your account when we get templates. Thank you. Sure. Any other concerns, guys? <clears throat> all right. I'm going to, I got all my, all my systems firing here. I've got a few of you I got written down here. I'll send a message to you real quick as we hang up. Um, if you guys need anything the next five, six days, just send me a message and I'll have a Zoom link ready for you. We'll jump on and I'll help you get going. Hi, Kyle. This okay. is Deborah. I just wanted to make sure you noticed. Yep. I got you too, Deborah. I got you down my list here. Okay. Thanks. All right. Okay. Thank you, Kyle. I'll wait for you then, Kyle. Thank you. All right, guys. See you. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Bye. Bye-bye.